<clears throat> Good morning, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to, to come and talk to you this morning. Um, I think I'll go for the well-being zone. I think that's why I need. <laughs> um, and, and also, I think there, there, you've got a huge amount of excellent and interesting speakers this morning, so <clears throat> I won't take up too much of your time, but it would be important, I think, just to put the, work, the, the series of, of talks that you're having today in the context of the overall START programme that, that we embarked on some time ago. So I hope most of you will be familiar with some of the, the content of the report, at least. Um, but I, I will take you through a little bit of the background, just so that those of you who might not be familiar are aware of it. So you heard the Minister talk about uh, the, the setting up of the review and, and, and I was appointed to be the chair of that review in June 2015, which seems an enormous amount of time ago um, now. However, we've lived and breathed it for the last uh, 18 months or, or so. In fact, more than that now, two years. We, we set up a review group because we wanted to make sure that we were absolutely involving everybody across the whole profession, academics, third sector, and very, very importantly throughout this review, service users, families, um, and, and we wanted to make sure that this review was grounded in actually what, what people actually wanted, what ladies were telling us, rather than the other way around. And so we spent a long time trying to, to, to listen to, to professional views and also to third sector and service users. And that, and that I think, comes through in the report, as, as you're aware. We established four subgroups, quite difficult to manage, I, I think. And when we started uh, this review, I think we kind of thought it would be, you know, a review group and it would be fine. And it would just, uh, you know, we'd work for six months and everybody was tell us and it would be okay. And after about two months, we realized that this was quite a big task. Uh, it seems obvious now, but at the time, uh, I don't think we really understood the magnitude of that. So we set up four subgroups and, and a program board and, and, and worked our way through this in a, in a fairly structured way. And that, that process resulted in the best start reporting report being published um, in January this year. Um, and and we, we kind of were a bit anxious about 76 recommendations. We started with a few recommendations and we probably had maybe much more than that at some stages in the, in the process. But we, we came down on 76 recommendations, which is a lot, but they cover a lot of ground and, and they cover a lot of fundamental um, processes within maternity and neonatal services. And I think one of the things when we went round was that we, we, we saw such a great amount of enthusiasm, great staff, great ideas and best practice every single place we went. We, we went and toured and, and heroically at the beginning we thought we would go to every board and, and I thought that wouldn't take us too long. But kind of, you know, three quarters of the way through that uh, travelling roadshow of Scotland, it, it was quite a task. But, but it was actually is hugely um, important to this review that we actually listened to everyone and saw every board um, and saw people in every board and, and listened to what they had to say. And, and every single board we saw excellent practice in some areas, some were better than others in, in areas, but everywhere we went we were really, really impressed by the enthusiasm and energy of the staff and, and their approach to, to maternity and natal services. So if we move on to what does the report actually talk about? Um, I, I wasn't intending to stand here this morning and read out every recommendation. You'll be glad to know where you, you won't get to these very interesting speakers after me because I'll be here till three o'clock telling you all about the 76 recommendations. But, but I thought it would be useful just to put in the context because the, the people who follow me are actually going to talk about what I would call the real services rather than me as the chief exec telling you what's happening. You really, you'll be much, much more interested, I'm sure, in hearing your colleagues um, and, and take it from there. But there are a, few, a very significant number of fundamental changes in this report, and, and one of them the, the, is around the continuity of carer. And I know that, that represents quite a different model um, for, for ladies, but we, we saw as we went around the country, ladies in, in every part of, the, the, of Scotland telling us that uh, they, they, they wanted to have a, a prime relationship with someone within their, their pathway of maternity and neonatal care. And we, we heard some stories of, of, of ladies you know, telling us that they had 14 different interactions with 14 different members of staff. And that made us really thoughtful about whether that was the right thing for people or not. So we, we, we took the continuity of care concept and made that a centre sta uh, stage part of this review. Um, and that will cover the whole spectrum, and, and you'll be aware of what it says in the review, so I won't read it out, but the whole spectrum of care through that maternity journey. And we also talked about care being co-located to make it easy for ladies and families around community and hospital-based services. And that is a fundamental change and will require some real careful thought about how that should be implemented. 
We were also very keen to make sure that person-centred maternity and neonatal care were centre stage, and I'm sure everyone in this room will be doing that to a greater or lesser extent. But we saw quite a range of approaches to, to some of those things, and it, and it is important that we look at what is important to mums and babies. And I know that you know that, but it's very, very important that we keep at the centre stage of what ladies told us. And it was very much about keeping mums, babies and families together in a, in a way that suits them. It has to be practical, and we're quite clear about that, but it has to be um, more focused on what mums and babies want. And also in the neonatal care um, aspect of that, that we see a lot of good work going on around that, but it is important to make sure that families are, are involved right from the, the start. And I, I know that works underway in most units at the moment. And, and we, we heard a little bit of talk, just to, um, the, the lady prior to me, talking about team working. And team working is fundamental to, to, this, to this area. Um, we, we saw excellent team working when we went round, but we also saw some, some examples where people described the team being a little bit clunky. And therefore, there, there are recommendations within the report about how teams work um, and, and making sure that, that, that they are embedded in everything we do. And we also talked about clear referral pathways. We also heard quite a lot about differential pathways and different approaches throughout the country. And one size doesn't fit all, there's no doubt it doesn't, but it has to make sure, it has to be clear and people need to understand it rather than kind of being in a piecemeal way. Um, we were quite thoughtful about community hubs and there's been a lot of talk about community hubs, but we believe that there is an opportunity to develop community hubs in a localised fashion, so it's not that there's a blueprint which says it must be this, this and this. It, it, it is very much to make sure that local boards and communities have the opportunity to look and see what's relevant to them. We also looked at postnatal neonatal care, and um, there's a lot of discussion about that and whether we need further investment and different pathways in, in that setup, and that was one of the clear recommendations as well. Along with co-location of services, and also for vulnerable women, we saw quite different models around the country, and that's probably right, one size doesn't fit all in this area either, but it is important that services for vulnerable women, and we also heard a little bit about mental health this morning, and we did talk to some vulnerable women and their stories were, were, were uh, made us very thoughtful about what we, we need to do and put ourselves where they are, not where we are, and actually think about the things that matter to them. So that's why we've looked at vulnerable women in, a, in, a, in its entirety to make sure, in their entirety, sorry, to make sure that we have got them at the centre of what we're trying to do. In terms of neonatal care, there has been a, some discussion about that. Um, the intensive care unit, um, we have made recommendations to, to change from a model that we currently have to a smaller number of intensive care units. Um, and that work will start shortly um, and will take us into them to the, towards the end of next year, probably. Um, to, to come to fruition. And also looking at developing neonatal community services in a seven day way, and that was one of the clear recommendations that people looked at. Um, there are a number of what I would call support services, doesn't mean they're less important, it's just a different role to support the, the work of the uh, maternity services. Transport, we talked about that quite a lot, and we had some um, engagement with, with transport services, and one of the recommendations is about doing a, a further piece of work around uh, transport. Remote and rural care, we saw really, really interesting. We went to all the islands, we went to some of the remote and rural areas within the Scotland and we saw um, quite a lot of different models around Scotland um, and some of them had, had developed um, along the lines of what was appropriate for the local um, circumstances. Um, and, and what we saw was that, that people were doing enormously um, great things there, but actually they were looking for a slightly more formal process with, with um, other boards to make sure they had um, access to appropriate um, experience and, and skills and competencies. So we, we looked at that. And that again will be a piece of work which doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the same in every area, but, but we do think that's something that we should um, embrace. Workforce planning, you'll, you, you'll be aware as I am of the, of the challenges around workforce um, and also making sure that we have the right people with the right skills at the right time, but also that they have the opportunity for training and education and development. And that really is an important part of this review. Um, in terms of IT and quality improvement, there are some issues as well about, um, we all have our own version of things and, and in maternity and neonatal, you have some standardization and you also have some variation. And as part of that, we are looking at um, how we would drive that continuous quality improvement throughout all boards and also have some further work around a single maternity care system and the electronic maternity record. 
So how are we going to go about this? So as we say, we started um, a few months ago now. Um, I was asked to chair the implementation programme board uh, following the review. And we now have set up this kind of motley crew, I think you've got the photo there, do you? Um, of people who, that's not all of them, but uh, some of them who are going to assist us in that programme board. Some of them were part of the review and some of them are, are, are new people to us. Um, but hopefully we will continue with the, well, we will continue with the, the full engagement process that we established as part of the review in order to make sure that we are listening to people and hearing their views as we go forward. Oh, there's a tune. <laughs> right. So in terms of the, I, I explained to you as part of the review process that we ha had to have some structure because it is quite a big task this as well and the danger is with 76 recommendations we try and do them all at once and you know in three years time we realise that actually we're not quite getting to where we need to be. So we've established the programme board as I showed you there and underneath that three subgroups so the continuity of care and local delivery of care, um, workforce and education and perinatal services. And in addition to that, there's a small executive group because sometimes we have to just kind of decide how we're going to go forward in a, in a, in, and make a recommendation to the programme board. And also there are a large number of national linked projects and we're quite keen not to, to duplicate work that's already going on, but make sure that it's all connected because there's nothing worse than you as three groups trying to look at the same thing. And underneath that at the bottom, you'll see there are some, there are some supporting work, there's some supporting work around early adopter boards, which I'm sure you're familiar with and I'll cover in a minute. And also a bit about local delivery of recommendations. And also as we move into that regional planning space, then it's important that we try to look at what, what could appropriately be, be dealt with regionally. So what, what sort of things are in, are, are in the subgroups and how is it going to work? So in that continuity of care it's subgroup, we're looking at the overall model of care. We're looking at the community hubs, as, as I've described to you. We're looking at supporting work in the community and how, what skill set people need to do that, because for some people that will be a change. We need to look at obstetricians and alignment with that. And we also need to look at the postnatal and neonatal care, the operation of FMUs and the caseload and core hospital-based midwives. And that needs to, to, to flow as a smooth pathway, both for, for ladies and their families, but also for staff. And it is quite a big challenge, that. So there's a subgroup looking at that. Um, and has just started their work. And you'll hear some more of that later on. So in terms of perinatal services, we, we've put um, neonatal intensive care unit locations in there, pathways, risk assessment tools, the locator system and the availability protocol, and also looking at medical care out with the maternity service. And also, as I described to you, looking at the, trans the, the neonatal transfer staffing model. And that's quite a key aspect of this as well. Workforce is, is so important that we thought it should, we should continue with one of the, the groups that we had before, which was around workforce and education. And those things there <coughs> will be centre stage to what we're trying to do, because if we don't support the workforce, have the right people with the right skills, and, and we don't do some workforce planning as well, and do some education and, and development, then actually we, we, will, we will struggle to deliver this, re the, this review. So those are really, really important things, and that work, has, as I say, has just started as well. And hopefully, as we go forward, some or, some or all of you will have the opportunity to contribute to some of that work. So I described for you a, a, a number of the recommendations will be locally led, because uh, in a board, I know what it's like when someone comes along and tells you that they know how to do it, and, you're, and it's very annoying. So we, we do want to make sure that there's this kind of balance between a framework within which we're operating, but also that local empowerment to, to make sure that, that people who know their own environment um, actually influence that and actually drive forward the change. Um, and so we have looked at 23 of the 76 recommendations being suitable for delivery at a local level. There does need to be a little bit of a framework within that to work though or else um, people will do it in compl completely disparate ways. And one of the, the, the issues within the Scottish Health Service at the moment is really trying to reduce that variation. But it should be appropriate to, to local circumstances as well. So it doesn't mean that one size is exactly the same for Orkney as it is for the middle of Greater Glasgow. We've also um, identified a, a local lead in each board because it is important that we have that network to make sure that we're engaging properly with, with boards and, and colleagues within there. There are a number of national link projects we saw on the previous slide. I, I won't read them all out. There's probably more than that, and I'm sure that everybody could say in this room, well, actually, you've missed this and that and the other. So I, I fully accept that. But 
the, the key thing here really is just to talk about there are really important things and the Minister, you heard her talking about MCNs and you heard her talking about perinatal mental health and those are hugely important issues. Some of the other things are also very, very important and it's how we make sure that we have a, a, an appropriate streamlined approach to that rather than differential. So we're working with the Scottish Government colleagues to try and make sure that that is central to what we're trying to do. So I described for you some of the work around early adopter boards. And when we, we, we went out and asked boards to, to express interest in that, we were um, overwhelmed would be too strong a word, but we had a large amount of interest in that. And we were very, very pleased with that. Um, however, we needed to try and do some selection because we can't manage everybody as an early adopter board. So after a brief selection process, those boards there, as you see on the slide, were selected to be the early adopter board. What we're very keen to do is make sure that those who are enthusiastic and want to test other things, there's quite a lot to, to do in testing things within this report. So, so even if we're not an early adopter board, there will be plenty of other opportunities to, to pilot things and work with the review team to try and make sure that we are spreading that um, best practice and, and using the enthusiasm and energy that you all have to actually maximise the impact for the review going forward. I talked a little about engagement, um, and as I say, we embarked on a, a fairly extensive engagement process the last time, um, and, and we want to continue with that. And it will be a slightly different approach because the, the review process will be different from the implementation process, but, but it is important that we continue with that engagement. And we also listen to the things that you're finding challenging and also the issues that you think that are important to, to your local circumstances so it becomes relevant to, to the appropriate local situation rather than me sitting in the central t team saying, well, actually, that's what it looks like. So it is important that we continue to have that dialogue. We have had a number of local events and, and some regional events were hit, uh, were, took place over the summer, and I hope maybe some of you will have attended them. And also there are local leads, um, and there are also um, a number of other visits planned. We will be doing some further events in, in 2018, so you will see us again. That may be good or bad, but it will give you the opportunity to, to contribute as, as you want to do that. I'm not good at this, blogs and websites and Twitter and all that stuff, so um, uh, we, we have got people who, who we have got uh, newsletters coming out, we have got some blogs, um, and Twitter is an important uh, element of that. So, so we, will, we do want to hear from you, and we also want to communicate widely with you. Um, so, so take the opportunity, if you have the time, to do that. Um, we will also be sending out information packs to boards because sometimes uh, when we think it's clear, then actually people say, well, it actually would be good to have some sort of information that, that we can use as essential to, to our work. So we will be doing that. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, thank you for your time and uh, I'll let go move on to the next speaker. Thank you.